What's going on everybody? Welcome back to OIH Tutorials. Today we're going to take a look at some of the laptops that I recommend for those who are heading back into architecture school or just starting architecture school in the next academic year. Uh, I know it was hard for me to choose a laptop, um, so I'm here making a guide for you guys on what I think is some good laptops and what I think are unnecessary things that you have uh, in these like super expensive laptops and what are some of the things uh, that you need to keep in mind when buying a laptop. But without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so let's get into our spreadsheet. So I've outlined here, first of all, the different programs that everybody is going to be running in school. So AutoCAD, Rhino, SketchUp, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign from Adobe Suite. And then you have the more niche Lumion, GIS, and V-Ray. Uh, now, almost all of you are going to be using AutoCAD for sure. Adobe PS, AI, and InDesign for sure. These are all staples. Uh, for your 3D modeling, however, you're going to be either using Rhino or SketchUp. Uh, so these are the, so these two are more demanding in terms of processing power. Uh, so we're going to look at some of the, the, the stats that is required for these. Now it's really split into two tiers, right? So you have the tier on the top and this is just your general drafting, uh, your modeling, right? This is, and your graphic work. So this will carry you through the entire uh, education of, of your architecture or landscape or urban design degree no problem you don't really need the other the other three so this will be classified really into like the tier two if you want to do something a little bit more fancy you want to do really cool graphics um, then you would go for Lumion V-Ray renders right just keeping in mind that Rhino and SketchUp both have their own render and you can make some pretty good uh, renders just from that or you can simply collage from Adobe Photoshop so you don't really need these um, through your programs. Uh, also, if you are going to render and do more uh, intensive renders, I do recommend having a laptop, I mean, sorry, a desktop instead of a laptop um, as it'll be so much, so much more powerful. Uh, anyways, so the things that we wanna keep in mind and look out for are the processor, the RAM, as well as the graphics card. These three are the most important things that we want to have uh, for our laptops, right? So processor, you want something good. You want something above two gigahertz at least, right? Uh, most most of the processors will be above 2.5 gigahertz and the ones that I'm recommending. Uh, obviously, the higher it is, the, the better. This just means that your computer is able to do more things faster, right? Um, so if you are exporting a sheet, uh, something with higher gigahertz will just export that sheet a lot faster than something that has lower graphics. Uh, sorry, not graphics, but gigahertz, right? Uh, so RAM is uh, something that's also very important. It's basically memory. Uh, and a good example of this is whenever you, you know, have 1000 tabs of Chrome open, which, you know, we all have some experience to. Uh, then the higher amount of RAM you have, the less laggy it's going to be. So this is basically how much you can multitask in a way, in, in, in essence, right? Uh, and graphics, it really is for uh, more of the modeling programs as well as Photoshop, right? How fast can your, can your computer process uh, the amount of graphics that's going on on the screen? So really, you want to have a dedicated VRAM, right? Um, so you want to go for somewhere, you know, two gigabytes, I would say is minimum. Um, you want to go for four gigabytes, four to eight gigabytes of VRAM. Um, if you, you know, get a laptop that has two to four gigabytes of RAM, you can still get away with it for sure. Uh, but it would be way better if you actually have four to eight gigabytes of RAM. Obviously the price is going to increase. Um, now the resolution, the hard disk, uh, hard disk storage is not, uh, that important it's obviously just icing on the cake kind of thing uh, but i would say the most important things you want to look at are the processor the ram and the graphics card now with that said i'm going to make a few recommendations split into three different tiers uh, of price points now these tiers are categorized into one thousand dollars and lower one thousand dollar plus uh, one thousand dollars to two thousand dollars and two thousand dollars plus I wouldn't really recommend getting anything over, you know, $2,000 or $3,000, but these values are in Canadian dollars. So I've also put a link to my associates uh, over here in the spreadsheet. So use that if you guys want, or if not, then just make sure you guys do your own research. Uh, 
to match all the specs uh, that is mentioned here. First up is going to be the Lenovo ThinkPad uh, E15. This is a really good laptop. It's it's not too bulky, right? Uh, it's got a good form factor and it's got most of the things that you want in in a laptop. So um, the 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 processor is pretty good. It's got an i5 1130. Uh, 1135 G7, right? It's got 2.4 gigahertz um, and overclocked, it's up to 4.2 gigahertz. And that's really good. So it'll be able to handle all your graphic work. Uh, it'll be able to handle basically all your tier ones, right? Now it might like a little bit uh, here and there, um, but that's, that's not uh, really an issue if you are simply just um, trying to do some drafting or do some graphic work. So this is a pretty good laptop, right? It's got eight gigabytes of, of RAM, which is pretty fast. Um, I would always just recommend like ThinkPads as like the budget good laptops because they have really good specs uh, and they are really, really cheap. Um, it's just, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of how they look, right? There's, there's better looking laptops out there. Uh, anyways, moving on to the Asus ZenBook, which is already a better looking laptop. Uh, this one flips all the way around, so if you want that, uh, if you want that 360, uh, go for this. Now the ZenBook 14, the ZenBook 15 are both really, really good laptops. Uh, again, it'll get through all your graphic work, your CAD work. It might lag a little bit and struggle a little bit if you're doing uh, Rhino, especially if you're rendering a little bit. Uh, but again, it's sitting at 2.3 gigahertz, right? And 4 gigahertz when it's overclocked. Um, so again, this, this, this computer will get you through most of the graphic works. It might struggle a little bit when you're doing 3d work, uh, but any of the 2d, uh, you should be totally fine. Okay. Now the second tier that we have going on is around the 1000 Canadian to 2000 Canadian range. Uh, I do have the HP Omen that I want to recommend to you guys. I think this is a great overall laptop, HP Omen. Uh, HP really knows their stuff when it comes to these uh, mid-tier or mid-range uh, gaming laptops, which also serves really good for uh, our architecture school and rendering and, and all those uh, graphically intensive programs. But it's got a 1660 Ti, which would be able to handle some rendering, right? Uh, some of the renderings might be a little bit slow, but you'll be able to get them out. Uh, it's got a really good processor. Uh, this is one of the newer ones, obviously not super high end, but still very, very good for Rhino, uh, for SketchUp. You're not going to have any problem when you're, when you're doing your 3d modeling, right? Unless you're going into your rendered view, it might slow down a little bit, but generally you're not going to have any problem running your, your rendering, uh, sorry, not your rendering, but like your 3d modeling, your graphic work, as well as your drafting. Uh, so these laptops, I think are very slick, uh, does a great job of doing everything that you need other than, uh, these like heavy intensive renderings, right? Um, and then secondly, we have the MSI Leopard. Uh, this one I want to recommend because it's got really, really good uh, specs or uh, specifications. Uh, but the one thing I don't really like about it, and this is a, a laptop that some of my friends do have, um, is it's it's more of a chonky laptop, right? It's got a really thick form factor. If you look at how thick this thing is, it's really heavy. And, and trust me, the charger is also really heavy. So if you're hauling this thing around all day, I recommend staying away from this one. Uh, but other than that, it's got amazing specs for this, for its price. Uh, it's got a great, uh, a great processing unit. Uh, it's got an RTX 2070, which is huge. This is one of the better graphic processing units you can have in a laptop. Um, so, so this will enable you to do a lot more powerful renderings and anything like that. Right. Uh, and it's got an MB, uh, 512 gigabyte of MBFE. Um, it's just that it's, it's, you know, very heavy. It's very thick. Um, so it's not a good laptop to carry around, but other than that, it's got amazing specs. So if, if uh, moving around is not something that you really care about, then I would actually recommend this one. It's, it's really good value, um, for the price that you see on the screen right now. All right, now we're getting into the top of the line. We have $2,000 plus laptop. Um, first off, we have the MSI Stealth GS65 uh, and 66. I only recommend this one because it's a little bit more sleek than what we just saw with the Leopard. The Leopard has amazing specs, amazing value. It's a little bit heavy. This is just an alternative. Now, keep in mind, this is uh, like around $500 more expensive. This is actually the one uh, that I have that I have had for the past five to six years, and you know it's it's been doing really well. It's it's carried me through school. It's been handling renderings. It's been handling all the different programs, no problem. Uh, it's got the same, it's got the same uh, processor. Uh, it's just 
got a, a slightly different uh, graphic processing unit or graphics card. It's actually a little bit worse than the Leopard. Uh, but this one is a, a better form factor. That's why I like it a little bit better. But this judgment is totally up to you. Um, the XP XPS 15 is something that a lot of schools actually recommend their students to buy. Uh, now, the XP XPS 15 is a great workstation. It's got a great processor. Um, it's got a slightly lackluster uh, processing unit, right? So you don't get that 3070, you don't get that 3060, uh, but it is a really reliable, it's a really reliable uh, laptop. And the reason why I recommend this one is simply because of its uh, its customer service, right? Dell has really, really good customer service. If anything breaks on your laptop, they, they, they basically, you know, you send it to them, they send it to you back really, really quickly, or they get a repairman to come up to your door. Um, but, you know, it, again, a very good laptop for overall use. You can do some light renderings, but um, just warranty and service for, for Dell, uh, at least in my experience, is, is why I would mainly recommend this laptop. Uh, and then the last one, which I think is my favorite one out of this uh, out of this price range, is the Razer Blade 15. Um, it's got really, really amazing specs if you look at it. Um, it, it has a NVIDIA RTX 3060, which is one of the newest uh, graphic processing units actually on the market. So you'll be able to do some pretty, pretty good renderings on this machine, right? Uh, you have, again, uh, the same graphics, uh, sorry, not graphics, but the same processor as some of the other ones that we've gone over. Uh, it's got its 16 gigabytes of RAM similar to all the other ones that we, we looked at. Um, and if you're a gamer, it's got 144 giga, uh, sorry, 144 hertz of refresh rate, uh, which is great. And you also have the option to choose uh, a more powerful graphics processing unit, which is the 3070. But in general, I would say this laptop for the $2,000 range would be uh, the best one. So just to wrap it up for everybody here, uh, I'm gonna go with the Razer Blade 15 for the best overall laptop. It is a bit on the pricier side. Um, the MSI Leopard for the best value, it's got the best specs and the best bang for its buck in my opinion. And for our best budget laptop for architecture students, I'm gonna go with the Lenovo ThinkPad E15. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed this video, I uh, hope you guys learned something, and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But uh, I will see you guys in the next one.